Hi, this is Chris Wiley with Wiley Development Group and Tasty Equity. Welcome to the highlight reels from our monthly webinar series. We originally called this segment, Don't 86 Your Restaurant. As our friend Matt Plapp says, you're either getting a boost from social media or it's hurting you. You can't ignore it and expect to get good results. This episode discusses what you need to do to win at social media and how to get it done. This is all about uh, building content daily. If you can get lucky, Matt tells us, don't overthink it. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Take little short videos, right? Pete, uh, describe what you've done like when, when the cantina opened, uh, how you went out and shot stuff, and then how you assembled. I'll, I'll have some examples here in a second. But. Yeah, the quick quick one for the cantina is just on an iPhone. Um, I kind of come from a production background, so I want to go get lights and camera and get it all fancy. And Matt was like, uh, no, just grab your phone and shoot it. Um, I mean, Matt shoots 30 videos a week at least, you know, maybe more. Um, so I was like, okay, fine. I'm just going to go do it. So I literally grabbed my phone, kind of like Matt said, went out in front of the cantina, you know, hey, this is Peter. Um, shooting my phone, holding it up, selfie. Um, did one take. Actually, I probably did three takes. I think I tripped over a curb uh, a couple times. <laughs> did that. It's all on my, you know, just all on my iPhone. I literally, then I flipped the camera around, walked in. Um, I have a little steady cam thing that Matt turned me on to. It's kind of fun for an iPhone, but other for the first one, I just literally held the phone. You know, uh, there's people don't mind watching a little bit bumpy video. In fact, I think there's actually some benefit to it, according to uh, my understanding about Facebook looks at video. So. I just walked through it, talked through it. I uh, did probably one take, maybe two takes of that. Makes you know, did it right, um, but nothing fancy. This is looking back at October when we launched. We took a Bowling Green, uh, Ohio-based Rapid Fire Pizza and retrofitted a year after it had been in operation with a beer system. These videos that went 30,000 views, 15,000 views, and we're still getting some to thousands of views when we do them each month, were all shot on phones. Most of them were single takes, unedited, right? We did have one, and it was a great example. I think we had when we did the beta testers. You can see that on our website. There, we had a bunch of little short permission interviews. Pete said hi. You know, um, what's your name? Is it okay if I put you on Facebook? And shot like a half a dozen of these. We took something simple. I think Ned from my team is using the new Adobe Rush product. Um, we use iMovie. It's really simple. This this is not huge production. But gluing those back together gives us great content. Um, offering free stuff. We talked about this. This, you need Matt's help for. I mean, I wouldn't have known how to do it. We could create a post. But you've got to offer free stuff to trigger interest. It's not what you do forever. And again, they're hidden once somebody interacts. But you make these posts. These are simple, still, in contrast with everything we talked about video. These are still photography stuff. They're very simple. They're free stuff that gets them to give you permission, confirms their interest. They, uh, you, as you, if you go through the sequence yourself, if you were to go to one of these posts and try it on one of our pages, you can do it yourself. It'll prompt you. It'll grab your email as it goes by. And now you are in the system until you decide you want out. By the way, our opt-out rate is about 1%. Most people play along. We track all this um, so that we can understand our customer acquisition costs. Uh, I saw the store operators, the multi-unit operators are on this call, and I'm sure all of you know right off the top of your head what your customer acquisition cost is when you do direct mail. Now, Pete, you do our direct mail. You've been monitoring it for years. And when you think about our, most of our stores do twice a month drops, right? Correct. Yeah, in the course of those twice a month drops, um, you know, for every $1,000 we spend, we get X number of customers come in and redeem a coupon. We don't know who they are, but we know they redeemed a coupon. Um, do you have in your mind, uh, top of head, uh, what uh, a direct mail customer through the door costs us? If you know, if we spend a thousand bucks on a mail drop, what that result is? We figure, you know, we figure it's a thousand dollars a month uh, on most mail drops in most markets, uh, and we're talking big, usually big cities or, or um, small towns, big cities, not uh, mailing like Cincinnati metropolis. Um, we figure about a thousand bucks to get maybe a three percent redemption, probably a one percent. Um, so it's it's not significant, and you don't. I mean, the the number of redemptions is a small percentage of actually what goes out there. So your acquisition costs can vary a fair amount, um, but it gets up there as you're spending a thousand dollars bringing the same person in every single time. I talk to operators every day who tell me their customer through the door cost on a direct mail piece or other type of promotion like that is in the uh, 10, 15, even $20 range. 
The difference here, like Pete said, is the customer coming to the door is 50% of the time they're new. But really what we're doing is driving new customers through the door and instead of just discounting to the same guy every time, because that's who tends to respond to a mailing with a coupon set on it, is a customer who already knows you, they come in with three coupons to try to get the best deal. But once we acquire them, we're able to remarket to them for free. Across our pilot today, we've expanded from eight stores to 28 stores, and we are getting about 900 customers out of the 28 stores opting into the program, giving us their email address, signing up for the Facebook rewards program to give us permission to market to them. And as a result, we can send not only coupons to them every month, excuse me, I'll come in a second. Um, we're not only sending them coupons, we can promote all of our limited time offers, which are not discount promotions. What I'm telling you is we're getting conversion rates. We're getting real action. You can see it right at the bottom of these posts. This is a, a buy one, get one free promo. That's kind of a steady, a standing post on each of our sites. Uh, Matt, in these type of posts, if I'm a customer that has redeemed it or has already seen it, is, will I see that post every time? Or is that designed so that I don't see it again if I've done some action on it? Yeah, it's, it's designed to exclude people that are already in the program and especially people that have redeemed. So it's equivalent to the Sunday paper coming to your house and because you've already gotten this ad, we ripped it out. You don't see it anymore. All of our local audiences in the local areas of these stores, they only see it once. I mean, they'll see it until they act on it. And once they act on it, they don't see it anymore. The targeting that we're using is, and I asked uh, Ashley, Matt, to give us kind of a sense. The Matt and Ashley taught us to add questions to every post. You know, we're doing the liquor pour shots. What would you pour? You want your content to prompt the audience to comment because if you get the comment, then Facebook says, why is that page busy? It starts showing it to more people, right, Matt? You've got to get people engaged. But once, So now Matt takes this simple post that we did, which, by the way, got to thousands of people and hundreds of engagements with no boosting, right? That's just an organic post. Then we come back after that post got some traction, and Matt, this is a dashboard where he is targeting uh, the male 21 and above and the female 21 video viewers, not everybody in the community, only the people who watch those preceding uh, targets, and those people are creating real actions. As you go into audience retention down here in this part, this is what really, really matters. Audience retention is how long people stayed in that video. So Matt's going to talk about engagement and about how measuring the engagement both from a viewing perspective and then actions they're going to take is what teaches you or what helps us know who's committed. I mentioned earlier that we saw 300 people watch all 20 minutes of that promo video. Now, maybe they fell asleep and left it running, but for the most part, they watched it, right? So curious people are great. We're going to talk about how you, in Matt's part, how you have to create a big splash at the beginning of the video, talk loud, bright colors, orange shirts like Matt wears. 30 seconds in, the customer is really engaged. But 5, 10, and 20 minutes, or if you do a five-minute like interview with a staff member and people really watch that, you'll see those get real traction. Uh, shorts matter. But here you can see, you can look at every video in real time. I mean, it's almost an addiction, almost like looking at the point of sale system to see how the sales are going every day, right, Pete? Continuous content is critical. Um, for anybody who thinks this sounds easy, it is not easy. Uh, we tried it in the beginning. We really didn't understand the workload. And, and I say this in that Pete has a team of a half a dozen folks that do nothing but create our ads, our content, everything it takes to run the two brands. This is an entirely different endeavor on top of that. Uh, I would say don't try it at home, kids. You want to try it with help and guide. You need a guide like Matt. Uh, I'm not trying to sell his services. I'm telling you that I've been doing it six months, and about two months ago, I finally figured out how to direct a couple team members to start going beyond the content that Pete's team produces, which is excellent, but it's the same across all stores, and we're moving to organic posts. Organic posts are video shot in the store, simple, quick, it's free, although we may put some spiffs out to our staff to do it, but we publish them for free. We're not putting ad money behind those, except when one gets a lot of views, it gets a lot of organic traffic, as they call it, then we juice that with ad money. In a minute, I'm going to tell you why to not use the boost post button, why to use targeted ads. But you told me a story of two large, like 40 to 60 cap operators, a couple miles apart, One's on social media and one's not, and what's the outcome like? 
actually, um, they're three blocks away from one another. So three blocks. Um, yep. It's there. There are closest, uh, you know, tap rooms. One is a tap room. The other one is, uh, is casual dining. But, uh, we found that casual, the casual dining concept has been more active on social media. And, um, you know, we collect all the data. So I get to see the data. I can tell you that, uh, in, in those two instances, um, the social media marketing company or that casual dining uh, business is outperforming uh, the other tap room location. Just based on that, we see it. We see a lot of it. Some of the the concepts that you know we see that aren't doing all that well. I think it's because of their social, their lack of social media engagement and their lack of marketing engagement. So, you know, as I listen to to Matt, I I get pretty excited about all of this because you know we see a lot of data and we've shared a lot of data. Uh, back to our customers, and uh, when you can do, when you can show stuff like this, I think it's really, really powerful. Put this in context: our hothead's normal quick service restaurant concepts didn't have alcohol, other than maybe a margarita uh, fountain type of thing, right? Very simple. When we opened the cantina ten days ago, the, we had to re-educate our audience in a town that how many hotheads are in Dayton, Deep? Twenty? Uh, oh, over twenty in the greater Dayton area. Over twenty. So there's over 20. Ten years. So. Yeah, tw- it's a ten-year-old brand. Twenty stores in town. A couple of them experimenting with margaritas, and now we modified the name, called the Mexican Grill and Cantina, and put in 27 taps and the first hard liquor thing in the entire country. And we had to change our audience's mind, right? And honestly, that first night was, you know, VIP night was great, and the first couple nights was pretty busy. All of a sudden, this groundswell by the next weekend. Every table had flight glass trays on it. I mean, we ran out of flight glass trays. People were pouring flights. How did we do that? We did it with the videos. I don't know if I have one of those right here. Uh, I, I don't have one right in front of me. But we literally shot a bunch of videos of people pouring flights. We were pushing the, showing the time lapse. You know, some had ad money behind it. Some was organic. All of a sudden, it's like the tide came in, and people who did not associate us with alcohol came in specifically to enjoy margaritas and flights of beer. And by the way, flights of margaritas. Who would have figured? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so to uh, close out on a co- last couple of things, again, the I literally have some team members who have never done this, who dove into this, an intern, uh, one of a, a technical analyst for my team. It's like, guys, go to the stores, take pictures with your cameras, hurry up, do more. They're shooting 20, 30 clips a day. They're shooting 10, 15 second shots. Ned, who's never used video editing software in his life, literally is posting to four stores a day now. I mean, in the last five days. You know, we had Pete's team, awesome rock star guys down at our corporate office, but we took this over because we needed the organic at our stores. We needed, Matt said, get your employees' faces on the video, tag them in the video, share, have them share with their friends. We have an employee interview, a, a 30 second interview with an employee who loves anchovies. The thing hits a thousand views in one day because he tagged it and he shared it with his friends who share it with their friends, right? This is not commercial marketing. You have to change everything you know about it, shoot a ton of clips, stitch them together, dial the sound down since our restaurants are kind of noisy, and post the silly things. And when you post, you've got to post with some thought, right? We can reuse that same shot pouring video. We crossed it over and showed it in our pizza restaurants. Hey, what if we had liquor shots like those other guys? They don't know we own the other store, or even I don't own it. The brand does. We got 2,000 views in one day, people, and they were commenting about what they wanted. What I'm saying is you've got to write the, you've got to write the content, you've got to get creative, and you've got to always have a question. Now, Matt, I still don't know what tags do, but we're putting them on there. You can uh, you know, teach us more about that on another day. But the thing is, the, again, this is not a hobby. We, we have 28 stores in the pilot. I only control four of them. It is a haze of video content. Uh, I, I immediately overran my Mac Air. Literally couldn't get email. Pete warned me, get a backup drive, put your video on it. And I literally was gridlocked on about my 10th day of shooting videos, right? So we're learning these lessons. But the point is, we're learning how to do it. And you can learn how to do it quickly, but you have to dedicate some people to it. And you've got to do it at the store level. You've got to go walk through your restaurants and interview your staff and take pictures of food. It's what uh, a friend of ours calls food porn. You got to have food porn all over your website. 
Uh, these are the takeaways. Again, we will put this in a slide deck that goes out to you guys. I think you're starting to get it. The bottom line is, uh, Matt likes to say, people go to Facebook to watch funny cat videos. This is not about production. Um, don't overthink it. Just get it done. Shoot tons of content. Um, videos are everything. You can use the videos and use the questions to prompt the comments, the shares, and the likes. Then you need a partner like Matt to do all the magic, to pull them into Messenger, capture the database, and make sense of it. And the last tips we have learned the hard way. Understand how people watch video. The first three seconds just meant they slid over it with their finger. So as good as a TV ad, right, Matt? As good as a TV yeah. ad, they actually, we know they saw our logo because it was right there. But in the next five seconds, you got to have something jazzy like Matt's orange shirt, you know, our logo, whatever it might be. Uh, Ten seconds in, you start to tell your story. What is your promo? Is it a catering thing? Is it a, you know, we're supporting beer shots. You, but you have to act very quickly. And any customer who gets past that, they become part of our viewer audience, our retarget audience. Again, check us out on the Wiley Development Group Facebook and or Wiley Development Group YouTube channel. You can watch recordings of these events.